Uh, hello YouTube family! We're back in the uh, Vega here. Since this sucker's been sitting, uh, the brakes need to be gone through because this has been non-op since 2016. So I'm going to replace this uh, master cylinder and uh, I thought maybe I'd show you guys how to do it. It's pretty simple. Up underneath the dashboard near the pedals there's a little clip right behind the uh, brake pedal and you undo the clip, you just pull on it, comes off a little rod, this little rod is there, there's a clip you just push the clip off and then pull this to the side and it comes right off of the pedal okay so then you've got the master cylinder loose and you've got to uh, undo these fittings and then you have to undo these nuts and you take out your master cylinder and you put in a new one and you tighten up these nuts and these nuts bleed the brakes of course put the clip back on on the pedal and you're done it's pretty easy I couldn't see paying a guy to do this the only time that you're going to run into trouble is if these nuts are rusty so put a little penetrating oil on these threads let it sit for a minute tap it gently with a hammer now I'm not saying beat on it I'm saying just a little tap 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 to kind of jiggle whatever rust might be there free and then you want to make sure you've got the good tool. Go buy a set of these. These are a uh, flare wrench, open end. And that way, you can go over the line, you can go over the line, and get on the nut, you see. And then if you're still having trouble moving it, get yourself a little piece of a torch lamp. I just used it. You slide it over the wrench. Now you've got all this extra leverage. You've, you've probably heard the saying, give me a big enough lever and I can move a mountain. It's the truth. You don't need an impact gun to do everything. You just need a lever. You need to be able to use a fulcrum and use your simple muscles to create more uh, torque. So anyway, this is coming out. I'm already... I'm sorry I didn't document every single part of it. I took off the, uh, the lid and I drained the fluid. You will need one of these. These are super handy tools. It's a vacuum pump for sucking out brake fluid. Uh, you, you, you follow the instructions. It says to pump, right? You hook up the hose to the pump. Then you hook, hook, put this hose in your reservoir and then squeeze this handle. It builds up vacuum which sucks the fluid into the cylinder. And then once it starts to get full, just pour it into a reservoir and keep going. You use it later to do your brakes too. Suck the air out. You still need a person to help pump the brakes and squeeze all the air out, but this is a useful tool. That's what we're doing now. I'm doing the fittings. I was going to pay a shop to do this, but then I started looking at it and realized, man, it's just a clip and a couple of bolts. Why would I pay a guy 100 bucks to do this? And I could do it myself in probably an hour. Of course, I'm going to have to bleed the brakes when I'm done, which is fine. I was going to probably want to do that anyway after it's been sitting. Yeah, see, these are loose now. And I ordered uh, new hard lines because I, I plan to do some more brake work on this. I'm going to rebuild my calipers, put new seals. This car is 50 years old. This is the original master cylinder, I'm pretty sure. And I was noticing that sometimes, it's one of the reasons I stopped driving it, because I knew the brakes needed work. Uh, sometimes I would drive it and I'd go to stop, and the brake just like didn't do anything. It would go down, but it wouldn't stop the car, which was terrifying. And uh, didn't give me a lot of confidence driving it. So, I'm just going to fix everything. Put new seals in the calipers, put new rubber hoses up front. The, the rubber hoses are done. They're peeling away. You can see the fibers inside them. It's pretty scary. That might be the issue too. It's just a ballooning going on in the rubber lines. So I'm getting a new set of those. And then taking those off, if I damage the hard line, I'm, I'm getting a set of those too, just to, in case. Because these hard lines, they have fittings like this that go into the brake calipers that stop the rotor but they're much smaller and even with one of these 
tools. It's, they're so frozen that they just round and then you've ruined your nut and you can't put it back on. It, you almost have to cut the line and put a new fitting. But this is going fine. I knew it would. Nice big fat nut like this. This part is made to be serviced because they figure someday in the life of the car you're going to need a master cylinder. And they're cheap. This thing was not even 50 bucks, I don't think. And I took it... You should see it. It's really pretty. I took it to my bench over there and I uh, ground off all the casting flash with my Dremel. Because I don't like parts to be rough. I think I read in some German engineering book once that parts should feel good in your hand. So I agree with that. That would be neat. This is going to look nice. What a nice piece. See? And then I sprayed it with the Eastwood cast gray uh, caliper paint. So it's pretty brake resistant paint and it should look nice, never rust and whatever. The lines are free. I have backed out the screws and just pull the lines out like that. This one might give me a little trouble because of the air horn. But I can turn the air horn a little bit to get some clearance. I think that's good. Now we just got to put a, a 9 16 on these nuts. Get them off. The bag is really an easy car to work on as long as it hasn't been modified. I mean, ones with V8s probably not as much. The stock four banger gives you lots of room to work. Lots of room to work. See, look, like this nut's coming right off. I'm going to clean that nut up too while I'm at it. I like to uh, wire wheel them and paint them silver when I have them off. Keep them from getting grody like that again. Now this one is a little trickier because the line's in the way, but we'll make it work. Well, so I can't get a socket with the lines the way they are, so I'm going to use a wrench. But I'll show you how good this lever works. So you just take your pipe, take your pipe, put it over your wrench. Right, where's the wrench? There it is. Put your pipe over the wrench. There, yeah, see? Just like that. Levers are awesome. If you ever work on a Vega, Watch out, this is 12 volt live. They put the battery junction terminal, see the batteries over there, but they run a 12 volt lead to it. And so this thing's hot. And if you ever tap against that with an open wrench or a piece of metal and touch the body, ooh, the sparks will fly. That's why I put a little piece of rubber hose over the nut so you don't hit it, you hit the rubber. The only part that's exposed is that little tab going to that relay. but. Anyway, you can see I tap my electric fan into it, put my relay there. But yeah, watch out. If you're ever working in this area on a Vega, this thing's hot. So we're almost there. Just got to undo that nut, a couple more turns, and then the whole thing will come right out. Okay, you can probably get it the last couple turns with your fingers. Yep. Try not to drop it on the floor. It's no fun chasing nuts. Okay, the master cylinder is free. You know, there's a little bracket here in the way. I hope I don't have to mess with that, but I might. There might be another nut below that we're going to have to get rid of to get that bracket off. But this is looking good. Yeah, this is looking real good. Get those lines out. Master cylinder off and stick the new one in. Okay, that bracket was just for the uh, distribution block of the fluid. So I just pushed it aside and now this is coming out. I have to turn it a little bit. Get the rod out. There you go. There's your master cylinder out of the car. And be very careful taking it over the paint because brake fluid eats paint. So off it goes. So here we'll inspect it. Okay, okay. here's the funky old original one. And here's the aftermarket one. Look at how this boot is shot. See how the boot's all torn from 50 years of use. Look at how this is all rusty and nasty. Look at how thin this is and cheesy. This is GM original. Hilarious, huh? So there is a way to rebuild these if you really want to go that route. You get a new boot. It comes with a new boot and all the seals in here. You can take it apart, but look at how crusty this thing is. Why would you even bother? Especially compared to the new one with a nice reservoir. I mean, this one looks way better. In the meantime, let's... uh. Take a wire brush and clean up the mounting threads because they were a little gummed up from not being used for 50 years. All that entropy just kind of 
clean those off. Get those threads nice and shiny. Alright. Just get in there and clean up those threads. Looks good. You can also do these, but I would protect the fluid openings. You don't want to get any crap in your lines. But yes, you could do it on these fittings and, and clean them off, and I will, but I want to cover up those fittings. Okay, so far so good. I've got it kind of resting on the nuts. I've got to go inside the car and guide the rod to where we want it so we can put the clip on. And we also need to pull the rubber plugs out so that the lines can go into the new master cylinder. So this is the part that sucks. Wriggling under the steering wheel and getting underneath the dashboard and all that. It helps to have a light. I find for this car, since I have a roll bar, it's easier to kind of finagle yourself under the steering wheel between the gear shift. But it still sucks. And this is the reason you pay people to do it if you're not flexible enough to do it yourself. But to save $100, I can deal with a little neck pain. Okay, so here guys, now you can see what we're doing. You see that, uh, well, maybe you don't. Hey, right there. See the shiny gold rod? That's our new rod on our master cylinder. And do you see the little <sighs> rusty uh, pedal mount above it? Well, we're going to pull that, uh, finagle it into position, and stick that on it. Just like this. It's got to go there. So it might even help to move the pedal in. Get it lined up on it. <laughs> there. Like that. Hey, see? But it needs to go all the way on, and then we slide the clip on. So I'm going to set you guys down and deal with the car. Okay, so here's the clip. Here's the clip, you see? And uh, basically what you do is you just put this part on the little post that's on the uh, pedal, and then slide it back and lock it under this little clip, you see? So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so there you go. There you go. The clip is on. You see how it's locked on the little gold part? So that's not going anywhere. We've got our master cylinder hooked to the pedal. Now we just need to go outside and tighten the mounting nuts and hook up the uh, fluid lines. God. Oh, jeez. Uh, 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 it's like giving birth to yourself. Ah! Uh, 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 there we go. Okay, we're all done inside the car. Yay! So there you go. Master cylinder's in. I started the nut on the front fluid line, and I'll do the one in the back in a minute. But for now, I'm going to take these little mounting um, nuts and wire wheel them and paint them silver. So here are the nuts after wire wheeling them. It just gets off the surface rust and the corrosion that's starting on them. They look pretty good. Now I'll just paint them silver with some Rust-Oleum silver. So now it's just the reverse. We just uh, put our open end wrench on the fittings for the fluid lines and we go to the right. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, just like a light bulb. I always tell people if you can change a light bulb, you can do wrenching on a car. Because it's pretty much the same thing, just you have to use a tool to unscrew your light bulbs, basically. But it's the same principle, righty tighty, lefty loosey, righty tighty, lefty loosey. I'm going to just keep tightening until it won't go anymore. I'm not going to go super tight until I get the mounting bolts on, but I want to get it started. Just like that. Get down in there. That's a nice looking piece. I got this guy off Rock Auto. Friction Dynamic or something, I think was the name of the company. Never heard of them before. But, hey, whatever. Usually they just sell remanufactured original Vega parts. This one is a brand new manufacturing. They cast it. They made their own. The reservoirs are different. Everything's a little smoother and better. That's shiny hot nuts. Bacon in the sun. Okay, we just put those on. And yes, they do get screwed up when you put the wrench on them. But that's just part of it. Who cares? I'll go in and touch them up later with a paintbrush. Mmm, this one's tricky. It's hard to get your finger in there. There we go. Okay, so I found a better way. I got a short uh, 9 16 
and you go up under the line, under that line, and onto the nut. Look at that. Now you can just do it. Tighten it up. And master cylinder's mounted. Now it's just locking these down nice and snug. Make sure you get them as far as they can go. Don't monkey tight them, but you want them snug. Because this is your hydraulic fluid that's going to stop your car, and you sure don't want to leak there. I think these are kind of compression fittings anyway, so you do kind of have to drive them in so that they take up the shape of the threads there. Oh, there you go. That's how you put a master cylinder in a Vega. Pretty easy. It's probably similar to most cars. The only difference is if you have power brakes, which is most cars later, there's a big power booster behind the master cylinder you got to deal with. So once it has all new rubber hoses instead of the 50 year old ones, and I rebuild the calipers with new seals. I think the brakes would be a lot better. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good week. Bye.